move on to the Pac-12, where Washington will try to remain unblemished against Utah. Washington, what's sitting around a nine and a half point favorite here. You know, this is Utah's coming off just a, a complete waxing of Arizona State, which had like had they had like, kicked out their yeah, Borgat got hurt. They had to go to Conover, who had no chance. They had to kick out Arizona State had to kick out their true freshman guard to left tackle. It was a disaster. Uh before that game. And Utah just died. I think you Arizona State had 73 total yards. Utah had over 500. Complete domination. Utah's pass defense on paper is great, but I will say, I mean, they held up relatively well against Oregon USC. They've gotten a lot of breaks elsewhere, like Arizona State's fifth string quarterback. They played Baylor's backup, right? So they have a couple data points where they were, you know, they played Dante Moore in his first road start. Cal's true freshman in his first road start. So they've had some, you know, performances where I think that they've been helped by the circumstances, but it's definitely a really good pass defense. The question here for me is, how much, how successful can Utah be running the ball? Washington's run date, already mentioned it earlier, over a 50% success rate allowed. You know, but can Utah keep up that way? Can they play keep away enough? Utah hasn't been great in true road games in the Pac-12 either. Mm-hmm. I can't get a good feel for this one, uh, but I think you you like uh, either a side or total. What do you see here? Yeah, I pulled the rubber band back and – Threw a threw a dime down on Washington. I, I I'm not getting real positive traction in the market on it, but it's just things. The notes that I'm hearing, everything out of Kyle Whittingham's presser, the numbers that I'm seeing and the stats. To me, this lines up to be a Washington blowout. Now we talked the big handicap last week against USC, which you and I were both on USC. One of the few games I think I was wrong on last week, but. It was because Washington continually struggled with two, four, five, three man fronts. Like we were just talking about this with Pac 12 defenses dropping eight in coverage. And some teams were dropping nine because Washington refused to run the ball. What did Washington do against USC? They went ape shit on the ground. Dylan Johnson went berserk, four rushing touchdowns, I think 250 something yards. So finally, Washington says, you know what? If you guys can take this away from Michael Penix, we're going to show you what we got on the ground. I think Kalen DeBoer is, you know, I was talking about him being, you know, bullheaded or just wanting to throw into coverage. It, it seems like they're more of a complete, you know, offensive unit now. And if that's what Utah is going to show them, they're going to take the run. And if Utah tries to pressure Michael Penix, they're going to get the pass. So I'm more comfortable saying Washington is more of a complete offense now, not just a throwing one. And, and you know what? That gives some of your wide receivers like Jalen McMillan a little bit of a rest, not having to have such the workload on them. Washington back on track after struggling against Arizona State and Stanford, which showed them really light fronts. They went anti-light box, pounded it in the back. I think if Washington's going to score, they're going to go up and down the field. They're going to get their points here. Can Utah generate enough scoring opportunities and score themselves? And I think the answer is no. Kyle Whittingham came out this week, said, you know, Jaquindon Jackson, game time decision. Ankle is hurt once again. I mean, Jackson had that one big breakout game. And after the game, he said, I'm pissed off because I'm injured every game. Well, now he's injured again. He might not even play in this. And when, you know, that was brought up to Kyle Whittingham and his presser, he said, oh, Sione Vaki, he's only going to play a maximum 30% of snaps on offense. The rest of the time, he's going to be at his natural position in the defensive backfield. And that's where we need him this week. And I'm just thinking to myself, who's running the ball? Well, Kyle Whittingham answered Jackson's that. banged up, right? Yeah, Jackson's banged up. Vaki's not going to run. He named a true freshman off who I think has five carries on the season as, as the, as the guy that's going to get the, uh, the attempts in this game. So I don't mean to like, like treat that, like that's a bad thing for Utah, right? Cause Utah is the one thing where they can throw a pig farmer at quarterback. They can throw a defensive back at running back and they can still beat teams. It's pretty crazy. I don't want to say that the they're thin, right? Because they seem to come up with these no name people that you and I don't even know about and blow teams out. But I just I, I think they are the thinnest they've been. I mean, with all the injuries from the from the beginning of the season till now, this is the thinnest they've ever been. And then Whittingham said at the end of the thing, we want to use a little bit more tempo. And I and as it relates to how many injuries that they have, they want to use a little bit more tempo and they weren't able to do that last week. That's not the key to beating Washington. You got to be able to run the ball. A, you don't want to do that as a dog either. No, you got to run the ball. So the things like everything that I'm seeing in the stat sheet and everything I'm hearing from Whittingham in that press conference on Tuesday, uh, Washington's got a chance to blow them out, get some style points, and maybe slip into the top four here. I won't have anything on it, but I'll be rooting for your bet. And for personal financial reasons, maybe we'll get a th- Washington blows out Utah 
Oregon State maybe close sleepy win. Get a three plus three with Oregon State next week. Um, I, I mean, Oregon State's. I can't even. I, we might. We could do the pod now. Oregon State's rushing attack is at Washington D. Oh boy. Yeah, they're gonna go up up and down the field. USC last week. Uh, what? This is uh. If you go back and look at their, I mean, this is outrageous. I mean, USC they should have covered. That. I mean, I can't believe they didn't get a back door, but they lost that game on a fourth down late, and then Caleb fumbled. That's the problem with USC. Well, we'll talk about that game in a minute. Here's the last 21 rushes for USC against Washington D. 9, 5, 7, 10, touchdown, 7, touchdown, 11, 41, 33, touchdown, 14, 10, 14, 10, 14, 25, a 0, 11, 5. I mean, good Lord. And Marshawn Lloyd didn't even play. 